Okay, so welcome everyone to, to the Vienna GS. Um, my name is, uh, as Roan said, Adrian or Adrian Bolonio. I'm from Spain. I'm a front end developer at Bill Um And you can find me on Twitter or GitHub or Instagram, same user. So, what I'm going to talk about today is a problem that we had at Bill Haven when we were developing a new project. Um, so in the real state, ad insertion in the mobile version or apps, iOS and Android, the three platforms that you can use in a mobile phone, you have different categories like house, flat, uh, land, or like um, holidays, um, um, flat or house. So you have some common elements in the forms, but every category has a different layout and this continues, so the whole form is different. For flat, you have renting. So for renting, you have renting price. For selling, you have selling price. For land, you don't have rooms. So different forms. So we didn't want to hard code any form or any logic in the, in the, in the client side in the front end. So what we ideally want is to have a user choosing their category, passing to a markup API to set how do we have to, to display the form, do some magic, and then you have the correct form in your phone. So what we created was the Wilhelm markup language, or as we call. Oh, this, okay. I hope I hope you can you can see it. So every node of our BHML, so the Wilhelm markup language, has three main properties. So one is type, who defines only one element type. In this case, it's an input. Properties. Um, is a key value, so for example, the key value pair to be sent to the API is called attribute key. In this case, it's broker's last name, colon zero. That means it's the name of the user. In this case, it's a require, not to require, but read only uh, field. And the type is text. Um, so these kind of things um, allows reuse of types in, in that differs only marginally. And we will see this in later in an example. And you have children, and this is a recursive structure. You can have several children, and your children can have different children. And in this case, for example, one children is the placeholder of the, of the input. So what information is not sent by the server? So any paddings, any border, any color, any other layout information that you will imagine in a, in a, in a layout form, uh, label positions or title style if it's bold or not bold or the hint text if it has to be smaller or bigger. So where do we have to take this information from? What is this information coming from? So everything, we, we believe that everything should be in the structure of the markup language. So that means if the type, we said that an example that the type was text. So if the type is money, then the label has in the, is in the left side or the type units in the right side. So I will show you an example, for example, type money, we know that the label is in the right side, in the left side, and all the times money is in the left side, at least in Austria. Type unit, we want the label in the right side. Type number only uh, allows numbers. Type text allows every character. Every information, we know it by the markup language. So. We, we talk about reuse of types. So this is two, two structures with the same type, which is input. But they are different. Again, type unit, they have their own attribute key. So this is the key that we have to send to the API if we want to save the, the element in the, in the database or in the API. But different, different. So this is required. This is, it has a max length of 20, for example, and this one doesn't have. These have two children or each has two children, one is the placeholder and one is the unit. So you can see, uh, I don't know how to, yeah, perfect. So you can see that this placeholder is this one and the unit is this unit. So everything comes in the markup, everything. So uh, a slightly more complex um, element, so it's a select. We, don't, we didn't want to make a drop-down select because in the, use, in the um, mobile phone, every Android makes it different as an iOS or every browser makes it render different in drop-down or select. So we wanted to make a model that you can choose. So the label goes in the title, then it's an option. So the children is all the options. 
So you can see that every row is an option. This select is multiple. That means we need to render checkbox instead of, if, instead of radio buttons if it's single selection. And the label of every option goes as a label in the row. And like this, every option that we had. So how it should be? How is the, 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 the whole journey? So we have a markup API built in Kotlin DSL. Then whatever the markup arrives passed through a component layout factory. So we know which component we have to render to build the whole form. That means is it an input or a group or address or text or input, uh, image upload or a page that opens a new model. And what about SEO? We wanted to use to, to deploy server side rendering. So here uh, is what, what I talk about SUI. SUI is an open source uh, library built by our colleagues in Sipsted, Spain. This is a company uh, similar to Wilhelm in Spain. And so you can find them in, in, in GitHub. It's totally open source and free to, to, to use. And they're open to receive your pull requests as well. And so what is SUI? So the philosophy is an open source library in the separation of concerns. That means they have a bunch of tools that you can use. And one tool solves only one problem. There is no tools that solve different problems. They, they wanted to make separation of concerns and the finest granularity, so atomic tools. And they have some SUI components. This is purely front-end and user interface components. So about the tools, what I used in my application is the SUI SSR which is the service I render in for your single page application in React. This, this, uh, the whole SUI kit is built for React applications for now. So this is a bunch of the tools that they have to, to be able, for example, they have a performance um, monitoring or polyfills or um, translation uh, linting uh, bundler who is working with Webpack in the hood. So all these tools are available open source. As I said, the components are purely UI components. So a button is a component, a label is a component, an input is a component, a box is a component. And you have the theme that they provide and your side theme. So you can overwrite, and the theme is only and only a set of variables, let's say margins, uh, type, uh, font sizes, colors. And you can override your theme with, with your own variables. So. I wanted to be quick because I want to show you how it, how it works. So this is the, the whole, oh, okay. Uh, maybe lies. Yeah. Is it better? Yeah. Good. So this is how the whole, Can you make it bigger? yeah, sure. Better? Okay, so this is how the whole uh, markup um, works when you make a call to the REST API. I downloaded it in a JSON file because I don't know, uh, I don't know if I was able to, to, to have internet. So this is how it looks. So that means at the beginning you have to render an input with a placeholder. Then you have a text, then you have an address, then a text, then an input with a placeholder and with a unit, then you have another unit, so an input with another uh, text and unit, a select with all the options here. So I'm going to show you how, how, how that looks. So this is, this is the, the, um, the markup we're receiving, and we are displaying. So you can match here an input, and there is an input. There is a text, there is a text. There is an address, there is an address, and so on. So if we want to serve a different, um, um, okay, let's, let's say that, okay, address is a pre pretty obvious that is, that is, um, is a standard uh, thing to, to show for, for a real estate. But let's say that we want to have the address the first item. So we move it. So we move it as the first item. I save the file and 
Okay, now the address is rendered first. That's how we build all the layouts for the forms. And we don't have to deal with project management saying, oh, I want to change this, you have to change it. And we have to hard code. So we have, for house, we have selling and renting. For flats, selling and renting. For land, selling and renting. So it's a lot of logic that we have to do. And we didn't want to hard code it. So that's how the um, markup works. And that's how the component factory works. So um, let me see the domain. So the domain uh, in this case is returning all the data, but here uh, it will be like fetch um, in all the, 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 the API endpoint and you will return the JSON. Then the general lay uh, the layer structure is received. And yeah, sure. Better? Great. So it's taking the layout the structure that is coming from the API, then looping it. And for every component, as we build a, no the nodes are always has a type, properties, and children, which is the basics of React. We just create an element with type, properties, and children. And that's it. You just create the element, push it to the component list uh, array, and when you render your UI, you just receive the whole array of the layout and you map it with a key. And it renders the whole thing. Uh, we try to make the stateless as possible, all the elements, so a button should be stateless, maybe a page to have a kind of state, but that depends on if you're using Redux or you're using MobX. But that's how, how that's how the uh, what is the the uh, the main characteristics of of the of the Wilhelm markup language. So the benefits for us is that we are dynamic because we can build any layout from the for just one um, API call. We don't have to hard code any template in the in the client, not even, not even having a logic to loop over templates. We just need atomic components that don't even do, don't even does anything, just a button that you will on click, I will tell you what on click does, but just render. And it's, it's very, very easy to maintain and very, very extendable. So that's, that's how the markup works. And um, about the server-side rendering, so I deployed the same application to Now. So this is in the in, in Now server. And this is how it looks at the code. So that means you only have the app here. Let me. So you only have the app here. So SEO here will, will, will not work. But let's say that we de deactivate the JavaScript in the browser and everything is server-side rendering. So it's SEO friendly and it's working offline as well. When you don't have JavaScript, you have the cache version. So that's very, very beneficial for us. So we don't lose our, our SEO ranking and performance-wise, it's rendering the server. So it's not lost. The, any performance lost. So we're, if you want to know more, uh, whoop, 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 wait. If you want to know more, uh, you can find it in the blog of uh, our tech blog in Milhaven or in our Twitter, or I create a uh, repository for this, for the same code that I show you. And you can check out the open source uh, Sui components uh, kill tool, uh, toolkit that the guys from, from Spain did. And that's all.